Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I've what I've done uh, in terms of following the instructions in the uh, EVNG cookbook to get it installed on Google Cloud Platform. So I started with the um, the EVNG website, go to the documentation section, and here it's got instructions on how to install uh, EVNG on Google Cloud. As soon as you click on it, it tells you to go to the Eve um, Community or Professional Cookbook. Um, and I've downloaded that. This is the um, community uh, cookbook. It's version 5.1. And uh, if we go down to the section where it gives you instructions on how to install it on Google Cloud Platform, that you'll find that on page 37. So I'll go to page 37. And uh, I'll just follow these instructions. So it starts off by asking you to connect to the Google Cloud Platform. And this is my um, cloud platform. Uh, I'll go to the um, compute engine and the virtual machine instances, and we'll start by building a uh, virtual machine. So let's get back to the cookbook. It tells you to sign in, tells you to create a new project. I've done all of this, yeah, create a new project. Uh, and then further down here, it says, <coughs> give the project uh, a name. I've already done that. And then it starts off by asking you to prepare an, an Ubuntu boot disk template so you can do nested virtualization. It's giving you this single command. Now, I'm going to do this again, but when I enter this, it will obviously fail because it will say you've already done it. So I'm just going to paste that. And I'm going to go and make plain text. There you go. And I'm just going to remove any carriage returns. I'll just compare that with what I've got here. And then I'll just cut and paste this into the shell command. So I'll fire up the shell. There you go, cut and paste. Okay, hit return. Right, it comes out with an error message, but the error message is uh, that the resource project already exists. And that's because I've already done it before, right? But I'm just showing you that I did follow that step. Okay, so let's go back to the next step. Create the virtual machine. So let's start by creating a virtual machine. I'm going to set the region. I'm going to make sure I select an Intel Skylake or a Cascade. CPU, so I'll click on create instance. Okay, instance five, that'll do. I'll select London because that's where I am. Uh, and then I'll select the Cascade, Intel Cascade Lake N2 processor. I'll pick a standard build with four CPU and 16 gigs of memory. <clears throat> and then further down here, actually, I'm jumping ahead. Let's have a look what's it telling me to do. Choose your desirable CPU and RAM settings. Deploy container image must be unchecked. I think that's this bit here. Uh, I'm not going to select that. I'm not going to select. It's going to be un I'm not selecting a, uh, a container image. I don't know why it says uncheck. There's nothing to uncheck. I'm just not going to select it. There's the name, region, N2. Yeah, got all of that. Enable display devices unchecked. So I've, I've got my uh, enable. Where's it gone up here? Enable display devices unchecked. So I've done that. Next, it talks about the select the boot disk and it asks you to select this nested Ubuntu focal image. So if I go down here, I'll change the um, boot disk and I'll select custom images and I will select that nested Ubuntu focal image as per the instructions. I'll just change that to an SSD disk and I'll give it, I'll make it 50 gigs for now. 
So 50 gigs, this is the persistent. I'm going to allow HTTP, HTTP traffic and create the virtual machines. Okay, so it's all allow default access. Um, no changes there, allow HTTP traffic. And then it just says create. So I'll create it. Okay, I've created the um, new virtual machine. And what I'll do now is I'll actually let me go back so I can show you that I'm actually following all of the instructions. I've done it so many times, I uh, don't even bother reading all of the uh, cookbook instructions. Right, it says click on VM instances to get access via SSH. And it's asking me to select SSH and then open in browser window. And the first thing it's going to do is ask me to turn to these commands. So let's open that up. So instance five is the instance I've just created, open in browser window. It's going to generate the SSH, uh, SSH keys first, and then it will open up the uh, SSH center session. I guess I'm in now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go sudo dash i not gets me into root. Uh, and then it's asking me to end, to start the evcom installation. And it's going to take it from this, this location here, which is, this is a folder. And it's, I'm going to run this, um, uh, not the pro edition, but I'm going to run the uh, eve.sh, install eve.sh uh, in edition here, look, install eve.sh, and, it'll, and I'll pipe it through to like a bash command. So what I'm going to do is go via the, my text editor, just in, case, just in case there's any control characters or something to me, might mess it all up. So then I'll go back to, where do I want to go back to? Where is my terminal here it is okay hit return it starts doing its thing now okay it's done its thing uh, let's just look back and see if there's any errors when I run this actually it doesn't come up with any error messages I don't think I can't see any here So there's nothing to indicate that it hasn't worked. Here we go. The fo no, there are errors. Here we go. The, follow the following packages have unmet dependencies, unable to correct problems. You have held broken packages. And then there's another message, error message here. Some packages could not be installed. This may mean that you have requested an impossible situation, or if you are using the unstable distribution, that some required packages have not yet been created or been moved out of incoming. Um, so it's not happy. Uh, and I've also tried, um, actually tried a different al alternative way, which is I basically took the file and moved it to my actual um, virtual machine, then changed directories and then installed it. Because you get you get a different, you, know, you get a bit more detail if you do that way. But anyway, regardless, so there are error messages when I follow this step, start evcom installation. It doesn't install properly. Anyway, I'll I'll do the, I'll carry on regardless. Uh, apt update is the next step. Okay, let's go. Let's do the app update. App dash app. Oops, update. Okay, and then you do. I think it was app install, wasn't it? Apt upgrade. Yeah. How do I spell that? Yeah, apt upgrade. All right, it does its thing. Oh. And again, you get, uh, you, you do, I think you get error messages here as well. Right, no, you don't actually. I don't think there are any error messages here, error messages here, but nevertheless, I think it was broken. It's already broken. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll carry on. Then it says reboot Eve. Allow some time for reboot and then press reconnect. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to lose this SSH connection. Boom, there you go. I've lost the connection. I'll wait for a little while and then I'll hit retry. Click on retry. And it transfers the SSH, SSH keys to the VM, but when it tries to establish the SSH session, it'll fail. I won't be able to connect to the uh, machine.
know, it, says, it seems to have gone past a bit where it was, you know, creating those keys. But it comes up with this error message, you know, failed to connect to back end. It tells me to ensure, I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. I have created this firewall rule, by the way, in my desperation. You know, I did, I did have a go at that. Uh, you'll see it here. I'll show you. I'll show you the, um, the firewall rule if I can find where the firewall is. Here we go. Set up firewall rules. Uh, it never gets hit though, the firewall. It doesn't get uh, touched. So if I go down here, here we go. I'll ingress for my AP. You can see it here. It's got uh, ingress direction. Allow that range for these two protocols, blah, blah, blah. I've done all of that, but it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. So basically, I don't, I don't think it works on Google Cloud Platform, not with the current build.